Thank you very much, uh, Naidu, Mr. and uh, Jayashri, ma'am. I hope I am audible. If you are, uh, just let me know if I'm, my voice is reaching you loud and clear. Yes, yes. Your yes, voice is completely sir. audible. Yeah. And uh, I will also be sharing my laptop screen. You just let me know if you are able to see my screen. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay. All right. Are you able to see my laptop screen? Yes, sir. Uh, it is just a starter uh, screen, sir. Okay. Now you are able to see my screen sh uh, screen sharing, right? Yes, right. yes. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, good morning, good evening to all the participants. Um, today's session is about, uh, we all know we have been talking about climate risk. We have uh, talked about so many facets of climate risk and what are the agencies uh, which are actively involved in this. Um, while uh, most of our um, sessions are aimed at understanding what is climate risk and where are, which are the different agencies working in different areas, for example, TCMD, PCF. So there are many agencies which are working towards uh, popularizing this or towards giving a dimension to this. It's also very important that um, how do we look the climate risk? Is it something completely independent to what we are currently doing? Or it can be, uh, be uh, completely integrated into whatever risk management we know. That is something like everyone is familiar. I think most of the group uh, audience out here are familiar with the Basel. So the session is an, um, an, an effort to understand uh, if at all, if this climate risk can be integrated into the existing risk management space, and if you are trying to integrate, is it something which can fit into the existing framework or what needs to make it fit into the existing framework? So the session is all about something like this. So um, uh, stop me wherever uh, you, know, you think that it is uh, not getting into the right direction or you may have some clarifications. You just let me know this is an effort from my side based on whatever experience I have, based on whatever views I have as to how this can be integrated while I've taken some of the references, but uh, these are uh, typically based on my understanding of the subject, okay? Well, um, now, I don't want to go through this definition, but what it tries to say is, is it something completely uh, different as most of the people know, okay, is it, even some of my most experienced bankers, when you interact with them, climate risk, is it, oh, is it part of some social responsibility, social corporate social responsibility? So the um, understanding or the perception of the bankers, most of the corporates, uh, somehow it is that, okay, it is completely different from uh, financial risk and it is more uh, seen towards something like a, Okay, it's an organization commitment to the environment. So, but um, if you see, it is mostly a financial in nature and it could be very financial in nature. <clears throat> Something like what we have seen in the, uh, you know, whenever there is a pandemic, I think we have all seen uh, how much drastic, uh, drastic effect it can, uh, you know, incur when it comes to, you know, something you are trying to alter in the climate risk. So it is a very much part and parcel of financial risk and it can also affect financial risk. So our session is mostly as to how it can integrate into the financial risks. Um, if you see here, there's a typical picture, which is, uh, we all thought that uh, till 2008, everyone, most of the experienced uh, risk professionals they were all of the opinion or the perception that, okay, as long as your credit portfolio is good and you have the required capital to cover your capital losses or loan losses, then the bank is very uh, safe. Uh, until 2008, we all uh, took that, okay, liquidity risk is something which is uh, never a concern for banking because we never thought uh, all of a sudden some, uh, you know, a pressure on liquidity comes into the market. So, we all thought that, okay, it is uh, banking. We all to take, took it for granted that 
liquidity is always available to the banks because we never thought uh, there will be a shortage in repo markets we never thought there will be a shortage in bank to bank financing but the moment there was uh, some crisis it started with a liquidity risk and we have seen like how this one liquidity risk a component which is completely missed by the existing by then the existing risk framework has resulted into an havoc so uh, then as a result of this we saw something like a parcel 3 where we saw something like a liquidity coverage ratio came into the picture net stable funding coverage ratio came into the picture so it was an effort it was an effort to integrate liquidity angle into the existing framework so are we in a current day are we in a situation where our existing risk management framework has it been insulated itself from the climate risk is it possible if it is not possible to insulate itself from climate risk how best we can integrate so that is a concern right now we are all in fact most of the risk management professionals across the world are contemplating i think the picture gives you some kind of an understanding as to um how do you put put your hand i hope it is as simple as this so to ensure that climate risk the effects of climate risk is not disturbing the uh, framework of all the uh, you know existing risk frameworks so it's an idea um, which is best described in this picture like how do you stop it uh, but the question is is it possible to you know separately disassociate uh, climate related risks into the the existing risk framework so we all know that it cannot be disassociated so the what is the best way like i think the quotation we all know if you can't win a uh, opponent you better join him so same thing if we cannot avoid it better integrate it so in order to understand what is what how to integrate first we need to understand what i am not uh, this session is not about making you understand what is climate risk and all that i think we have seen enough number of sessions on this now this is to understand the banking components of climate risk and how it can be integrated into the existing risk framework we are all familiar with the basel was there any question please no okay i think uh, this is something which uh, most of the group is familiar with uh, it start with the uh, physical risk and the transition risk and for any of the persons who is not aware fiscal risk is something which uh, banks being own entities they are subject to a lot of risk themselves for example um, something happening to the branch uh, branches or uh, you took one bank has an exposure in a uh, climate like uh, something like i think uh, you all seen now europe is completely dried up with all the perennial rivers and uh, now there is a water shortage and if you are in a cyclone prone areas and one cyclone all your mortgages are gone so you will be a lot of property loss so these are something which we can directly attribute it to okay this is something like i think in the previous session we saw what is the difference between acute risk and uh, chronic risk physical risk so uh, it's all about physical risk where the effect of climate can directly be felt or touched then there is also something like a transition risk this is something like it will result in over a period of time okay and there will be a lot of changes in the industry it is more about changing trends how slowly the impact of changing trends impact in impacting the uh, banking book for example something like what is uh, for example uh, who would thought that two one and a half decade ago a kodak which is uh, you know and like if you want to take a photograph you need to know what is kodak but now the industry is that complete industry is completely non existent because of the advent of uh, you know the smartphones and also uh, when we say climate i think most of the people do understand that it is something related to climate but it's also something to related to the demographic changes so according to me demographic changes is no way uh, completely you know different uh, you cannot disassociate any of the demographic changes uh, you know from the climate changes so these are some of the 
risks which are very relevant. I am only talking about risks which are relevant to the banking. I am not getting into other ESG or uh, you know carbon print, carbon greenhouse generation, carbon. I am not getting into that. Something like what it is impacting banking. Okay. Uh, like uh, we all know, like uh, there's an effort. Like in the previous picture, previous slide, we saw there is a uh, physical risk, there is a transition risk. Now the question is, whatever risk we understand on in this existing categories, how we can integrate with the existing uh, Basel framework? For example, if you look at the physical risk, most of it can be integrated into the existing operational risk. Or something like the transition risk can be integrated into the credit and market risk. Now we will see by picking up some of the important categories what it is and what needs to be done. So now we have got some understanding as to what are the banking specific risks of uh, climate risk. Now we will see how they can be integrated with, within the banking uh, parcel system. Uh, for example, these are if you look at the operational risk uh, guidelines under Basel. So these are the eight broad categories under which you will cover the loss ratios. Uh, you will see the loss uh, loss estimates. You will conduct all the surveys to get the data. And based on this, you will estimate what is your loss on all this uh, various heads. And then you will try to uh, you know provide capital against all your operational requirements. I'm not getting into the which method you will use to uh, cover all this uh, data, but it is this under broad eight heads. You will collect the loss data and then you try to provide capital against uh, the highlighted ones are the existing Basel categories, which needs to be sensitized to um, take climate risk into consideration. And we will see what are like how they can be seen. For example, employment practices and workplace now this is something which we saw very recently uh, i think most of the banks whosoever were not able to uh, make their employees work remotely or come with a new age of uh, new methods of uh, you know having a connectivity or having a work on go has um, suffered for example many are digital only bank i think this has given a completely new uh, opportunities to the digital bonds the way the banking has completely captured so under this category i think something new has to be uh, modeled into uh, something like assets and collect loss data so it is all about opportunity loss arising when your staff employee inaccessibility because of inaccessibility customer may suffer some of his uh, service issues he might feel that he is not serviced properly so there is a sense of an attrition. So, and how do you measure this? How do you measure this? It is about ability to provide remote working. So how, what percentage of your banking services an employee can uh, industrialize? When I say industrialize, he can execute things irrespective of where he is, or uh, irrespective of workplace safety. For example, there is a natural calamity and he's not able to reach the office. Can he ensure that bank runs without any impact? And if if you are not able to run, could you analyze what will be the potential loss? Could you analyze what will be the attrition loss? So this is the kind of a data which needs to be factored into. And, and most importantly, because you are ensuring the workplace safety by you know, trying to provide some of the remote working capabilities, now this gives a uh, a chance for security breaches. So how strong are your firewalls? Uh, what are the various losses you have covered? Uh, you have incurred because of on because of this some proxies entering in your bank, banking network and uh, you know, trying to disarray the banking operations. Again, coming to the next category, clients, products and business practices. So uh, today, if you are if the banks are expecting the customers to come on board or to buy you know coming uh, physically to the branch i think these are gone are those days so it is all based on identity and uh, recognition uh, remote identity and rec recognition 
but uh, this gives a, a consequence of uh, you know AML breaches. AML for some some of the people who are not from banking background, it is anti-money laundering breaches because of some lapses in know your KY, know your customer procedures. So because now the clients want the services to be fully delivered using channels, and if the banks have uh, this kind of mechanism, then it is putting itself prone to some of the AML or KYC issues, and regulators are so strict on this, they impose huge penalties. I think we have seen every year or so, some, one of the huge banks or the big banks in either in Europe or US being heavily penalized because of the breaches in KYC. Now, this is, again, it's a trend. Uh, now we see all this coming only these years. We have not seen the huge penalties because of the KYC and all, because now there is a lot of remote uh, onboarding of the customer, and that is where you have uh, higher chances of breaching your KYCs. And the most important, which could be completely directly attributable to the climate risks is what percentage of banking services extendable to the customers under self-servicing? Now, what do you mean by that? So we all know right now, most of almost every bank in the world <clears throat> give the services as to a customer may initiate a payments or he, he can initiate a request through channels. But question is, can he do 100% of his banking needs through either an internet banking or a mobile banking? Now, if, if the banks are not in a position to extend such services, obviously the customers might leave. So again, this is their direct loss data, which needs to be connected because you now why customers want everything to be delivered through online? Because, because the customers kind of experience we have right now, no customer is okay to come to the branch physically and uh, give any of the forms. It's all digitally. People have become so uh, sensitive towards climate. Even if you want to print a paper, people are questioning, do I need to carry a physical paper? So uh, clients are becoming, the citizens or the banking customers are becoming so sensitive towards the climate risk that they are not um, in any you know conformity with the banking requirements that they need to come to the office, come to the branch or print uh, dozens of papers put everything in a paper. So no, because if you see some of the banks, um, especially in Europe, NatWest Bank and all, they in their internet banking, they publish depending on their uh, customer choices. For example, I may use my credit card to a purchase petrol purchase. So it is showing in their uh, internet banking, it shows, okay, today you have consumed X amount of gasoline. And because of this, you have directly contributed to um, you know, so many kilos of uh, carbon dioxide. So it is, so banks are also trying to make customers more sensitive. So in order to, uh, when customers, they themselves are becoming sensitive. So if you are not uh, extending all the services, there's a huge impact that the bank will suffer in terms of customer admission, okay? Of course, um, second is damage to physical assets. We all know what it can happen. But uh, what is specific to the bank is um, it's like it is not only an impact of their banking asset, it is also can be impact of, uh, for example, in uh, some of the states where uh, typhoons or uh, all these are so common, uh, what happens is it is an element of wrong way risks. So first of all, because of the cyclone, customer may lose his uh, you know, livelihood, his employment, so which anyway impact is uh, repayment capacity at the same time, it will also take the uh, collateral value also. It will also reduce the collateral against which the value, loan has been given. So there's a double way, uh, double impact of all these physical assets. So have we um, brought in this kind of models? We need to, I know there are some models brought in, but uh, it needs to be more sharpened to include um, you know, effects of uh, climate risk coming into it. Of course, there's a business disruption. Uh, we have seen it, one of the <laughs> recent things. Many business, the supply chain, <clears throat> everything is uh, going for a toss. So it is all about, because of uh, the business disruption, what is the likely chance of a customer adoration happening and how much it results. So these are some of the matrices which needs to come into 
the existing risk framework in order to make that existing risk framework sensitive to uh, climate risk or to meet the climate ch challenges posed by the climate risk. Now let's get into some of the uh, um, uh, risk parameters, uh, the transition. For example, if you, let's take credit risk. Now, um, we all know uh, credit risk, we basically have two methods of uh, assessing the credit risk under parcel. One is the standardized approach and the other is the uh, internal rating approach. Now, what is the difference and the, what is the fundamental difference between these two? Uh, while the standardized approach is uh, more of a portfolio based lookout, so you categorize all your exposures into portfolios and based on a portfolio, you will assign some risk weights. So we are, it is not independent, it is not actually going into the individual loans. But the question is, um, Whereas IRB, it is uh, it is addressing that if it is not portfolio based. So what do you mean by portfolio based approach? This is only for some of the people who are not from banking background. So when you say portfolio based, depending on the type of customer segment, to all customers you will give one risk weight, irrespective of the inherent strengths of the customer. So for example, if you put A plus categories, A plus categories so you may put uh, tata's reliance both under a plus but there is a difference in the repaying capacity or the difference in credit risk between tata and reliance which is not being addressed by the standardized approach that is where people have gone to the irb where instead of a portfolio based approach i look at the individual uh, merits of the loan so that but the question is climate risk is it any of these two risk uh, methods are sufficient enough to impact the effects of climate risk? Uh, the answer is no, both cannot be done. What example? Why? Because um, in, uh, in a portfolio based approach, okay, to a large extent it addresses some of the climate risk, but the problem is the changes of climate risk is across the sectors. So if one sector is um, undergoing any change, it has a cascading effect. So even a portfolio based approach will not be sensitive enough to take cognizance of the uh, climate risk. Of course, with the individual risk, it is almost even more, um, even more distance uh, in estimating the climate risk. So let's see, irrespective of whichever um, methods you use, what needs to be adjusted into the some of the risk parameters. So here, I try to uh, put uh, take some of the risk parameters and what are the additional components it need it needs to consider in order to make these risk parameters uh, take cognizance of the climate risk related uh, changes. For example, we all know EAD is all about a summation of few components: the outstanding, the potential that is the CCF multiples, the provisions already made. So it is all a combination of all these uh, components. So it's not sufficient that we will have only this component. So probably EAD needs to be sensitized with some of the climate specific things. So what we that, for example, we may have for every loan, you can have some specific provisions to reflect climate risk. Maybe if a uh, standard provision is, if it is 0.01%, probably we can have a very fraction of that which is very specific to provision for climate risk. Um, usually climate risk, um, we all know CCF, it is a contingency of some contingent liability turning into an actual liability. Now we have all seen uh, when a corporates are in distress, uh, either in account of uh, climate risk or so, there the actually need for further financing increases. Now we have seen uh, during the pandemic and all, every irrespective of the financial strength they needed more banking finance so the existing ccf pools which uh, mostly take into consideration what are these banking standard contingent liabilities resulting what proportion of those contingent liabilities resulting into actual liabilities but uh, here we need to come up with an additional ccf pools as to how or maybe uh, provide a markup on existing ccf pools for example, if you are the uh, LC, CCF pool is 50% because of climate risk, probably you may have you may have to increase 
another 2% or 5% make it 55 so that you are also taking into account some of the contingent liabilities related to um, climate risks actually going into and to make contingent liability into the actual liability now this is the next one is where i think uh, there's a more whatever existing models it needs to uh, take into consideration many of the other things for example the existing pd models are mostly uh, modeled on ability of a customer to repay the loans but uh, something additional which needs to come i think it is more about because in a climate risk obviously uh, going forward banking will impose a lot of uh, discouragement in order to you know uh, or make less attractive so that means uh, it will have uh, the corporates will have a lot of uh, additional margins which they need to spend on because of the carbon and whether the uh, customer is in a position okay was there a question please no so the pd model should reflect uh, to what extent the corporates can pass on the uh, additional burden on carbon uh, into its pricing so that it maintains the margins required and it thereby it maintains its uh, you know ability to repay so that also needs to come into the uh, that also pd models need to be sensitized and uh, again um, Nowadays, we can always expect this ability, to physical risk uh, or the transition risk always coming in. So what is the capacity of the corporates in order to meet uh, physical and transition risk so that even this ability should also be modeled into the PD models. Um, I think this is something which we can directly take from the experience of COVID. Uh, to what extent it can withstand the disruption of supply chain and is there any ability to fall back on the alternate supply chain? So these are some of the important things. Again, the wrong way risk, I think, as I explained, um, you know, because the impact of climates are so catastrophic that um, uh, it is very difficult to, uh, you know, maintain uh, or manage risk from one angle. So while your ability to repay also goes problem, the fallback mechanism also goes in proportion to ability ability to repay. So there's wrong way risk, and it is all about catastrophic impact. Uh, there's hardly any time left uh, before you even um, uh, realize that what needs to be done. So uh, I think this is somewhere probably the modeling which is there in insurance needs to come here. Uh, so banking needs to borrow some of the insurance related models because they all uh, insurance are uh, better more have better model to you know ability uh, something like contingent risk coming into the actual risk or uh, uh, policy payment risk uh, so they have factored in all these catastrophes so that an element of that needs to come into the pd modeling also um, the lgd i think i'm uh, not much uh, because we always uh, it's sort of like Loss given. If there is a loss, what to what extent you can recover from the losses? But those models, uh, most of the times, uh, these LGD models are um, modeled based on the haircuts or the ability to recover its price, uh, and then so some of this. But uh, it also need to take into account some of the physical risk related, where in one shot all the assets have gone bad or something like a catastrophe impact. And coming to the other important risk parameter, it is the risk weights. Now, uh, if you take a standardized approach, risk weights are more at a portfolio level. So can we um, make the risk weights something to take into account? How sensitive is a particular industry or a particular group uh, to the climate risk? So to what extent it can insulate itself from the climate risk, if these uh, to be can be modeled in risk weights, so that will uh, try to take into account some of the climate risk related things. And other important thing is uh, the concentration risk. I think uh, none of our uh, while we have every central bank has concentration limits 
concentration risks but this is more at a at a policy check but uh, that's need to come into the risk weights you now for some of the people who don't understand what is concentration risk uh, every almost every central bank in the world they have this like no bank can ex- give take an exposure uh, which is more than an x percentage of their net worth to a single customer or a single group and because uh, something happened to that uh, something happening to that group it's a straight impact on the bank's net worth but um, these concentration risks have been um, set up on the ability to repay of the group to whichever you are taking exposure but now probably the time has come where it need not be tied to your uh, tied to bank's net worth it can also be tied to the total credit portfolio so that um, some of the industries which are very sensitive to climate risk you can put less exposures on so that bank has uh, sufficient window time or sufficient insulation in order to meet the uh, climate risk okay uh, and kumar kumar i have one question this is kind of right yes, uh, i mean a couple of questions I'm sorry first is on um, the irb uh, i mean we are talking about pd and gd and so on and so forth right but yes. but there is a trend Uh, of of every bank um, moving towards standardized approach and uh, you know um, taking away irb okay this is happening across the globe because of va- various model deficiencies that uh, the regulators see and even the gsb sort slowly migrating their uh, major portfolios into uh, and not, not because of basel 4 but even even otherwise right uh, banks are actually moving towards standardized right this is one thing uh, so the risk weight sensitivity you're talking about should be enabled to cover uh, climate risk the second question i have is like i mean it's it's not a question probably today when we monitor concentration risk we we are not actually uh, you know it it is just a monitoring uh, measure by the regulators and we are not actually doing any kind of buffers or capital um, you know requirement on um, the the concentration risk that we are taking right not more than 10% if it goes the regulator says okay right you know you have to actually come out of it right and you'll have yes. to stay under the but but i mean is your proposal say uh, is stating that you know probably we should we should actually try to um, uh, have an alpha or something on the concentration risk itself so that uh, the capital norms or the capital adequacy is not under threat uh, is that is that your proposal yes so that's uh, for example right now the risk weights have, are not taking into account uh, the concentration risk for example if a bank a bank which is heavily exposed to say power industry okay now what's happening is power industry okay if the corporate is extremely good and if it is rated a plus so my risk weight is only reflecting its ability to repay by virtue of classification classification into triple a plus but it is not taking into consideration my overall concentration to the power industry right so these are some of the Uh, i will only say recommendations or my view point as to how we can make um, the existing uh, risk parameters to be more sensitized to take into account the climate risk related uh, impacts yeah yes so something like a uh, concentration value correlation like avc yes. uh, should be should be applied yeah i mean correct i yes. mean good thought yes. yeah yeah for example if you if the risk weight otherwise to an a plus group if it is uh, alpha and because of a particular loan is uh, you know it is uh, already uh, as a bank portfolio it is already 15% of my portfolio probably i may go for alpha plus beta as my risk weight yeah thanks thanks kumar bhai yeah. okay any other questions Okay, can I, I have ask? one question to understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, just uh, just the catastrophe impact that you have taken for the PD and uh, LDD. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you uh, factor it as a part of your stress testing, or you want you your idea is to take it and the uh, regular um, portfolio? Yes. Uh, very good question. Uh, usually, yes. Uh, we apply uh, all these catastrophes into stress testing, but um when we see the stress testing model um, most of the stress testing models is like 
parameter by parameter. I don't know whether we have some stress testing models which takes into a concurrent all of this uh, happening together. And even if, and it's the, or the existing stress models are taking into account the compounding of, of all happenings have, uh, having uh, occurring together. Mm -hmm. So this is something like, uh, this is where probably banking as an industry needs to learn something from insurance uh, because uh, when they um, forecast the you know uh, probability of a uh, insurance coming for uh, you know policy payment that is where they do a lot of uh, catastrophe impact or like uh, because something like what we have seen in the pandemic the ratio of uh, you know policy payments to the actual policies i think they have gone so high that most of the insurance companies had difficulty but luckily none of the insurance company have gone bankrupt so that is because they were able to predict the effect of catastrophe like everything happening together and accordingly they have priced the premiums so because of which they were able to while they had some issues but they were able to we did not see any of insurance companies going bankrupt because of uh, the covid where even i think uh, the you know the ratio of policies coming for claim has been exorbitant i think we have not seen this kind of uh, claim ratios uh, in the past, but still all of the insurance companies were able to survive. It is because of that strong catastrophe modeling which they have in pricing the premiums. But there's a basic difference um, uh, by taking an actuarial model and uh, using the same for a, a bank. In the case of insurance companies, it is a matter of you know collecting more premium. Mm -hmm. So, but in case of banks, you'll be pricing. Yeah. So when you're Rising. going, if the I know if the actual model throws up a higher you know loss, then you'll be pricing high, or reducing the portfolio. Either way, so practically, yeah, way. won't it impact uh, the business itself and the, the uh, and not just the business uh, of the corporates like the government also in case of PSBs, uh, I mean asking to uh, reduce the rates. I mean this I'm going little beyond. But I was yeah, just thinking on those thought. lines. Yeah, no, no, it's a it's a very very valid question. But if you see um, in insurance, it is the only model on which premium is priced, right? It is only the effect of catastrophe or the actual the life expectancy and something happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Survival. Person dying next year or probably coming for a claim. So these are the only only things on which this is modeled. But in banking, probably this needs to be a very small component which should go into the PD. I'm not saying we'll rewrite the, all the PD models. Probably uh, one of the other, um, uh, what do you call it, um, other component which can go into the PD modeling. While it cannot be uh, completely overwritten of all the existing PD models, these are only some incremental things which needs to come into it. When you practically do, it will be interesting to know what is the impact on pricing, if you could. Yeah, yeah of course. Thank uh, you. And that is why, uh, if you can also see in the second point I said, rather in the first point itself, that it also depends on uh, to pass on whatever uh, discouragement or whatever uh, price, uh, whatever impact of a corporate because of uh, you know climate risk, can it pass on that? Uh, to its uh, end customers so that it is able to meet the you know lending requirements from the bank mm -hmm. so otherwise if they are not able to pass on because of this pd models obviously banks if there is a higher pd obviously banks will price the loan a uh, little more than you know to a standard customer and because the customer is not able to pass back this uh, additional burden to its end customers Obviously, it's a hit on his margin, and whereby yeah, yeah. it also impacts his ability to repay, right? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I know. It's anyway. Uh, but, it's, but, I think but, working in progress. Let's sorry, wait and watch. Yeah, no, it, it but, must but, be but, like a work in progress right now. We'll yeah. have to wait and watch. Probably the impacts, as you are yes. saying. Yes. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for it. Kumar, Kumar, my point is if, if it is not an industry-wide practice, right, it impacts mm -hmm. the top line of the bank, right? So it is yep. it is not 
uh, one bank that should follow this okay it should be an industry wise yeah. industry wide decision uh, that should be taken yeah. on this. that is exactly the reason why we are saying that it needs to come into the existing risk framework where basel is followed across all banks across all geographies okay so keep it yeah okay and uh, there are some other important considerations obviously which can come into bus directly uh, basel or this can come into something like banks okay to so you i think this is something which we discussed in the previous slide you redefine the single and group customer limits not from the uh, threshold of uh, which is tied to the bank's network but it is uh, more of how to what extent you are entire portfolios are now sensitive to climate risk so something of that component needs to come into um i think kanan you are also mentioning the capital buffers need to be adjusted if you the alpha is your uh, multiple uh, because of the existing basel probably we need to get some alpha plus alpha i just to take into account uh, some of the climate something like what basel 3 has come up other uh, other than the existing risk capitals there is some two ratios which have come in so something like that uh, i just want to okay are you, are you yes. sharing your uh, powerpoint there is a comment in the uh, chat box also that your presentation is not seen in case you are using your slides you can share the screen once again oh not okay you are not able to see no okay, let me share this we are directly into the gallery view and the ppt is okay, not okay. seen let me share it again let me share this again yeah welcome yeah it has come now are you able to see my laptop screen now yes okay oh, there are other important considerations which are um, i don't know whether we can tie up to the basel or it can be outside basel but it is important um we are talk i think we saw something like uh, concentration risk it is more from the uh, banks network probably it has time where you will uh, have an, an additional layer of concentration risk which is um, you know able, uh, to what extent of your credit portfolios credit portfolios are uh, sensitive towards the climate risk so something of that needs to be done like what we have seen as a, as an effect of 2008 something like the liquidity ratios and then um, additional capital buffers were made so we also need to come into it you know what it is right now we don't know but some amount of uh, sensitization needs to come in these areas um, of course the accounting adjustments now this is something which i feel there could be a major change for example when banking started we started accounting the transactions we started accounting the transactions when they actually happen when ifrs came in the accounting got a major shift now we started accounting based on the contractual obligations uh, probably in a um, uh, climate risk probably we need to go little beyond and then we start accounting for even for non financial transactions for example the amount of water consumed uh, consumed or the amount of electricity consumed probably um that also need to come into the uh, accounting statement of course we right now it is all coming under energy services or the uh, cost of uh, manufacturing but i think I, there is an um, need to specifically call out some of the non financial data to be accounted for so that it could be more uh, clear or more granular and which can even go into as a related topic this data can go into establishing the net zero calculations which is again one of the important uh, uh, considerations for climate risk so uh, with this i end my presentation if there are any questions i can take it or we can discuss on anything else uh one more point uh, kg right uh, we can we can probably add it here right i think um, there is uh, unless banks actually decide on their fund transfer pricing for various business units right that they're going to discourage or they they they're just going to be really really aggressive in terms of 
transfer pricing okay between the treasury and the business teams um this 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 issue of uh, creating assets that are climate toxic uh, cannot be uh, really addressed so probably we can add the ftp angle to it as well right where the treasury of the bank uh that's that's a lot of uh you know rejigging or or revamping to the fund transfer pricing that it has uh to, to... okay yeah, we, can, we, we can add but uh, uh to me ftp is very internal to the bank's uh pricing uh i don't know to what ex how we can translate bank's internal pricing models to the customer pricing models so no, I'm, I'm, i don't have a view on this i'm, I'm talking about the encouragement uh, that will be the by maximizing the value the put yeah yeah you know yeah. says yeah, i i just had uh, tell me come continue i'll speak later no 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 continue ma'am continue ma'am please continue no no i just wanted to say ftp like um, uh, kanan uh, he was saying that uh, the pricing uh, how to link it to the internal the reason is because the maximization of uh, product pricing happens in the ftp model which yeah. includes all the premium so that is where the linkage is there so uh, from what i understand from my experience uh, when you do the pdlg remodels or whatever and arrive at the premiums it's going to impact the product pricing which will in turn impact the ftp internal ftp okay that so was my experience i mean if i'm wrong please correct me yeah. no uh, frankly speaking i i have no view on this so probably i'll take it as an input uh, maybe we can, i can dwell upon as to how we can interlink these two okay ashutosh you can please continue you were asking something okay uh, kumar sir we have a question in uh, the chat box uh, mm -hmm. asked by uh, prabhakar is sir so uh, mm -hmm. he is asking how many banks in india have implemented or what is the status of work in this regard uh, for this climate risk uh, yeah well i think we only have a draft proposal from rbi i don't think uh, we have gone to a stage where this is actually being made uh, in fact i think the first hurdle to cross is a net zero obligation which itself is a quite distant i really don't know whether rbi because um, one problem with uh, at least in indian scenario is um, rbi could not even push banks to get a completely compliant on basel because some of the banks have so less capitalized because of all historic reasons even to push these banks to uh, meet adequate capital using tier 1 tier 2 itself is becoming so uh, problematic so that is why they're all concessions uh, something like quasi capitals all this coming into the picture but i think if they suddenly push for the uh, climate risk i think uh, the capital banks have to get into a too much of additional capital building which to to best of my knowledge i think banks are not ready yet Okay. Yeah, correct. But the irony is, on one hand, we are lending to all these big polluters of climate, right? But but we we don't. I actually have a different view. Very badly capitalized our bank. I am. Yeah, because yeah. if you see from Indian perspective, yeah, but see, we are still um, well, we are very highly industrialized. But compared to our in current energy requirements, I think the scope for a uh, funding into this infrastructure or power is still there for us i know i think like uh, what uh, uh, famously jay shankar said the issue of europe uh, cannot be looked through the same eyes for rest of the world because in europe it is a concern now but for now, because they have secured their energy requirements so now they are into uh, you know all the uh, what do you get consolidation but if you look from indian perspective still there are some sectors where energy is still an issue so as a if you look at economy as a whole uh, still there is a you know push for lending into these industries so i think it will take some time before we get into that space that's what uh, take can i come into and have some uh, discussion one point of yes. the discussion of a mutual interest for all of us 
like yes, uh, it's a fine work that you are uh, placing all the bricks there to build a block but uh, all of us uh, are at a stage i feel that right now we are in a position that not knowing what and how much something may impact something in the client's balance sheet and the bank's balance sheet so this what is going to impact us and how much is like a green swan for us today yes. and you know building the uh, then blocks there upon later gets shaky and the framework gets re- redefined until and unless we put our cent percent all of us together in energy uh, energy on the point of identification of the risk that what is going to impact what point of what balance sheet of the client and what's mine like for example i give you two examples very sharp examples one is i know that if i am doing funding in pahalgam of some industrial enterprise it's going to be impacted by a cloud burst because the probability of this cloud burst is very high in palga <laughs> secondly if i have a unit in california and usa i know that some wildfire is one day going to burn me <laughs> so how much and when is this going to impact is known in california and pahalgam in india but if suppose i am in the industrial area of delhi i don't know what is going to impact me and how much it has already impacted the client's balance sheet and the bank's balance sheet is a sum total of the client's balance sheet only because we have all learned through burning our fingers the uh, double balance sheet syndrome then triple balance sheet syndrome it is only the client's fever which comes into the bank's balance sheet fever yeah so i think this is the time to uh, us for us what i feel personally other members may opine on it and i think to sharpen ourselves we need to be little more focused on what is impacting in the climate risk what item of the client's balance sheet and then it is aggregated upon our balance sheet so this is uh, i think uh, uh, something yeah. in your framework you make a point on the because the risk management starts from the risk identification first yes so at the present moment we don't know about this green swan we all look white swan everywhere so i think, I think uh, some of the points you mentioned i think it should have been addressed under the physical risk because um, physical risk also comes uh, geography i think when the um, when this physical risk identification was initially came in i think the angle of geography based physical risks have not factored in i think as you rightly pointed out the physical risks are specific to a particular geography as you rightly pointed out if a, if an industry is in there at pelgam the physical risk what it faces is different from the same unit setup elsewhere in the world right so to an extent the study of this physical risk uh, okay, should I, address I, 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 okay sorry for uh, the interrupting i give you one more thought to comment upon in your comments so i okay. give you one similar very simple uh, sensitivity climate mm-hmm. temperature rises by 1.5 celsius degree celsius mm-hmm. now what impact this brings on the balance sheet of state bank of india yes. 1.5 celsius increase in climate impact on spi we don't know yeah and as you rightly said the impact of sbi can come into what is the impact of a 1.5% increase in temperature on all customers of sbi that's that's what i say You're yeah right. that's what we are addressing in transition this where uh, okay let me um, just uh, to see in somewhere uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Sir, I maybe we can think... have... Yeah, we, we have another meeting also. 
Uh, okay, so, I think I can, we can continue this. Yeah, discussion. we can have a conversation via email, yeah. not an issue. We have a lot of pending questions also. Yeah, we can, we can continue in some other webinars. So yeah. I think it's a very well done course today. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. Yes, nice sir, definitely. And to scratch our heads, you know, to think upon and move ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I shall forward you the questions, Kumar, sir, and uh, maybe yeah. you can answer and we will, uh, you know, share them. Sure. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, just a uh, small announcement uh, for uh, those who are uh, joining us uh, for the first time that uh, soon we are going to proceed to, uh, towards our collaboration with the Global Association of Risk Professionals. And uh, <clears throat> uh, soon we will be reaching to some of, uh, some of the big milestones in this. And uh, request everybody uh, who have joined for the first time to join as a member or speaker or whatever capacity they want. And uh, definitely uh, you, they can contact us via LinkedIn page or uh, uh, or our email ID. Uh, we shall, uh, you know, our uh, contact number is also everywhere on the LinkedIn and every of the social media platforms. So you can contact. And uh, <clears throat> thank you uh, Kumar sir for the great session. And for the, uh, you know, <laughs> sorry for the time constraint, uh, you could not, you know, have enough of the uh, time to answer all the questions. All right. Okay, thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. Good thank good. you so much. Good presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kumar, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.